I am not joking when I say this next guest is one of my favorite people, has been for a long time. Andrew Hustler Patterson joins us from Winnipeg Sports Talk. And I'm just so darn excited, Hustler, because we could go Grey Cup, we could go Jets, we could go a lot of things. I think we should start with the 108th Grey Cup. How you feeling? Bombers favored by 3.5. You're a big betting guy. They're going to cover? Uh, you know what? I mean, I think I'd have to lean towards yes. I, I think there's a lot of confidence in this team, Rod, um, because they've earned it this year. Um, it, it's a very different atmosphere than 24 months ago when the Bombers were carrying an anvil of 25, 29 years of, uh, of failure into that game in Calgary. Um, winning that game changed a lot about this team. But what they've done since day one of this season against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, I think, has proven that you know they should be a favorite going in. Now, like we said all season long, they don't give the Grey Cup out in uh, week eight. They don't give it out in week 12. And they sure as heck don't get it out after the Western final. And this is going to be an unbelievable matchup, I think, for the Canadian Football League to have the Thai Cats hosting it. To have a rematch of 2019 is a perfect scenario. But um, I'm interested in your perspective on this. I think the Bombers sort of got away with one. I mean, they hadn't gone through a lot of adversity, and they had a lot of it against the Riders, especially in the first half of that Western final. And, um, you know, I think there's some semblance of the fact that, you know, hopefully they got some of those mistakes out. Um, because it's unrealistic to think that you could do that a second time in a championship game and win. But um, to me, it all comes down to the line of scrimmage. Um, I mean, in 2019, the Bombers throttled the Thai Cats on both sides of the line of scrimmage and won that game in the trenches. Um, and, you know, in a lot of ways, they did it again to Saskatchewan. I mean, they made a lot of mistakes, but their ability to move the football, to run the ball, and their defense, what can you say about it? Um, you know what? Listen, I think Hamilton is legit. I think they're going to have a lot of mojo coming in and playing in front of their home fans. But the Bombers have been the best team all season long. And uh, I do think that they win a second straight Grey Cup on Sunday afternoon. Hey, listen, I went into the week saying Bombers by seven. But that they will win the Grey Cup by seven or more. And I'm not moving off that. But I got to say this, Huss, we haven't really talked about this. And by the way, I really love being on your show last week and had a lot of great reaction out of it. Uh, but there was a lot of talk about that West final from 89, the 16 and two Eskimos being upset at home by the upstart Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Bombers almost did give it away. <laughs> this one, like how worried were you? Were you worried in that game? Um, well, I'll tell you what, um, first of all, I got to give a shout out. And we've talked about this a lot this week on Winnipeg sports talk, but the crowd and the people that showed up for that game, uh, Rod, that was some of the, that was the coldest I think I've ever been. I mean, we were in a wind tunnel, a wind tunnel for three hours. And, uh, but, pe but people stepped up. I mean, the fact of the matter was three minutes into the football game, the Bombers should have been up 14 nothing, and they were down 7-zip. And they continued to make some uncharacteristic mistakes. And I think that big part of it was the elements that they were playing in. I mean, Nick Dembski catches that ball 98 times out of 100. Drew Altarski's not usually fumbling on the goal line. Um, but the bottom line was we got to halftime the Bombers had made five turnovers and were down to three points and never give up points in the fourth quarter. So there, there was far more confidence on Sunday than there ever would have been at any other time in my lifetime. I guess I'll say that. I mean, they knew that there was a lot of work to be done and this wasn't going to be the Bombers running away with it. Um, but the way that they played all year and the fact that they were still in that football game, very much in that football game, despite five turnovers in one half, um, I think gave people a lot of confidence. And um, you know, as I said, they played great in the second half. I mean, there was the one big play to Duke Williams at the end of the third quarter. And then the fourth quarter has been owned by the Bombers this year. They did it again on uh, Sunday afternoon. And now uh, they'll hope to do it again in, uh, uh, this Sunday in Hamilton. As I say, you are what you are come playoff time. And uh, th th this is proven at this year's playoffs. Uh, by the way, so Hustler and I both have the Bombers to cover. I said we had a lot of things to get to. The Jets, I looked up where they were in the standings the other day, Huss. It was like, ooh, sixth. Only two points out of a playoff spot, but they, they seem to be raging in the Slurpee capital. Yeah, it's been a weird kind of three, four weeks, Rod. I mean, at 9-3-3 three, and three, um, with, you know, one of the best starts in franchise history, 15 games into the season, I think people were really excited and frankly really confident that oh, okay this is the team that we had thought you know you've got a Vesna trophy goaltender and you've got elite forwards and some great skill up front and the achilles heel for the last couple of seasons has been the blue line and the additions of brandon Dillon and nate schmidt absolutely made this as good of a talented a, you know good of a group of talent on the, on the bomber uh, the jet back end 
than they'd seen since the 2017-18 season. Um, but they had a couple terrible weeks. I mean, they forgot how to score goals. The special teams have been atrocious, and that is probably the biggest topic we've had right now on Winnipeg Sports Talk. I mean, um, you know, an impotent power play and the inability to kill penalties. I mean, they are a much better five-on-five team this year, um, but that doesn't really matter. You can't get it done with a man advantage or trying to kill penalties right now. So it's a work in progress. Lots going on. Vili Hainola got called up for this game tonight against Seattle. We still don't know whether he'll play. Uh, but, of course, Neil Pionk with the two-game suspension and didn't even make the trip because he's in concussion protocol as a result of the incident with Jason Spezza. Um, so I think these next couple of games are pretty important for the Winnipeg Jets to, to get some points out of Seattle and Vancouver a few days off and then back with home games against Buffalo and Washington. But I'll, I say this, the one thing I think we've learned so far through the quarter point of this season uh, is that it's going to be tight. It's going to be close, especially in that central division. There's a lot of good teams. Team like Dallas had a really poor start. They just won seven in a row. I mean, everything's sort of coming back to the mean mm. and, I mean, we talk about the salary cap and parity in the National Hockey League. I'm not sure that there's a better example of it right now in the Central Division. And tell you what, these games are going to have almost a playoff feel for a minute. I mean, you know how much Winnipeg people live and die with their team. But even more so now, with a little adversity, they had, they had a great weekend. I mean, they didn't score a goal basically for two weeks. Then they had eight on Friday against the Devils and a half a dozen against the Leafs in an incredible game Sunday night after the West final. Mm. Um, so the way they played on Tuesday against Carolina was pretty disappointing. You just can't get into a stretch like they had of about two weeks where they weren't doing it. You, know, you got to pick yourself up and get back at it. And they've got an opportunity to do it tonight against the Seattle Kraken. But uh, I don't think anyone's going to be comfortable until they're at 82 and the team's above the playoff line. Uh, Huss, I think we only have 60 seconds, but uh, the Winnipeg Ice lost at home to Edmonton 3-2 in a battle of the top two teams in Canada. Wayne Fleming Arena was sold out last night. I know that it's not hard to do that, but how much do you hear about the ice in your daily comings and goings? Are they paying attention in Winnipeg? Oh, wow. They have the best team in all of junior hockey. Yeah, a lot more day by day. I mean, the ice don't have the history in Winnipeg that the other teams do, and they sort of started off, and then the pandemic happened. And, uh, you know, they've had a real tough time getting traction. They're playing in what is essentially a temporary home for the next few years until they uh, build a new home of their own. But I can tell you that people are paying attention to the ice. Actually, myself, Michael Remus, and a few of the guys went out to the game last night. I mean, it's tough to miss an opportunity to see the top two teams in junior hockey in Canada go head to head. And Man, the talent on both of these clubs. I'd never seen the Oil Kings before. Very, very impressed with them. Uh, but the Ice are sort of carving their niche out right now. And uh, let's face it, there's nothing that sells a product better than winning. And the Ice have done a heck of a lot of it so far this year. And uh, should be a really exciting season. I can tell you from being at that game last night, all we can hope for is that maybe we get a best of seven between Edmonton and Winnipeg in the playoffs because it would be an absolute treat for hockey fans. Oh, you will. You will. Hustler, I wish we weren't out of time, but we are. Thanks for this. Enjoy the Grey Cup. Go Bombers. Appreciate you. Take care, Rod. Hustler Patterson joining. <laughs> there you go. Hustler Patterson joining us from the Slurpee Capital. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of the Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.